First in high definition, from the station on your side, this is Wavy News 10. It is a done deal. Tolls are coming to Hampton Roads, but you might not have to reach into your pocket until 2014. Wednesday, the governor will ask the Commonwealth Transportation Board for up to $100 million. Tell your side's Melanie Woodrow is live outside the downtown tunnel now to explain. Melanie. Yeah, it's a little windy out here, guys. Sorry about that. You know, there's no telling exactly what it'll look like here at the downtown. Once construction begins in the fall at the Midtown, the Secretary of Transportation tells me that there were two factors that largely contributed to being able to delay the tolls potentially until 2014, and that was the interest rates on Friday when they had their financial close. Those interest rates were a lot lower than what they had originally expected. Also, they had some extra money that they had set aside when those interest rates were higher. As early as this summer, Hampton Roads residents could begin to see signs of construction around the Midtown Tunnel. Pretty much it's a done deal and uh, we're moving this project forward. Secretary of Transportation Sean Connaughton says Friday's financial close provides the necessary funding for construction and possibly delaying the tolls. Here's the breakdown. A $422 million long-term low-interest loan, $310 million in state contributions, plus another $100 million to potentially delay the tolls. More than $600 million raised in bonds and private partners contributing $350 million in cash. As for that extra $100 million the governor is now asking for to delay the tolls, Connaughton says that's money the Commonwealth previously put aside when interest rates were higher. Since interest rates were low on Friday's close, Virginia has extra money to contribute, delaying when drivers could potentially have to reach into their pockets to contribute. The tolls will remain at $1.59 and $1.84, but concessions will be made for people using the MLK extension. Vehicles entering or exiting the new extension from High Street or London Boulevard will not have to pay the tolls. So basically what we're trying to do is, is keep the project uh, moving ahead, uh, deal with some of the local concerns about uh, the impacts of the tolls, uh, as well as the impacts particularly on the city of Portsmouth. And yet, despite dealing with some of those local concerns, there remain some local concerns despite this announcement today. Coming up tonight in our next half hour, you'll hear from one local business owner, his reaction to today's news. Reporting live in Portsmouth, Melanie Woodrow, 10 on your side. And not everyone is happy about this latest development. Tonight at 6, hear why State Senator Louise Lucas says no matter how you slice it, this is a bad deal. Well, many of you remember what you were doing and where you were on this day five years ago. That's when a gunman killed 32 people at Virginia Tech. This is the first ceremony that took place at midnight at the April 16th Memorial. The Corps of Cadets stood guard for 32 minutes in honor of the lives of the students and teachers lost. 20-year-old Lauren McCain of Hampton and 20-year-old Nicole White of Smithfield were among the victims. Ten of your side's Andy Fox has been at Virginia Tech all day as the campus remembers. Yeah, we'll always remember April 16th, and uh, the day started early for us today, around 5 o'clock. We were the only ones at the memorial, and then as the day went on, more and more people showed up. Family members showed up crying, always remembering the tragedy that took place here five years ago to this very day. The Virginia Tech campus awoke under a crescent moon. An eerie morning fog floated across the drill field. A remembrance candle shines, representing sadness and hope. Granite blocks brought in to tie down thousands of flowers arranged just right. 32 arrangements for each of the granite markers bearing the names of 32 lost to the throes of evil. Then a very informal moment of silence at 9.43. And freshman Bailey Bovat from Chesapeake moved by the moment. I still remember that day. I was with my mom when we found out. Uh, from that day, I wanted to be a hokey. It was a day that instilled in the minds of the country what Virginia Tech is all about. The way that Tech United, it's just it's absolutely just unbelievable and I knew that I 
couldn't go anywhere else. Bovac came to Tech in part because of how the campus responded in a time of unspeakable tragedy. Drema Muller stops by the Stones every time she's on campus. Her daughter, Crystal, a junior in 2007, couldn't bear to come. That I don't know. She is choosing to deal with it in her own way. I deal with it by being here and being very grateful for the Hokie community. The years have not eased the pain, not for them, you can tell, and not for them either. Classes have been canceled on this day the last four years, but today classes met. This class came to the memorial as a group, then sat and talked about life and what it means, what the tragedy means. Freshman Jared Brumfield came to remember Ross Almadine, who was the roommate of Jared's brother, who did not come back today. You're a Hokie, and on, on this day, you, just, you, you, you can feel it. And that's the way a lot of people feel. Now, coming up tonight on Wavy News 10 at 530, I'll report on how people remembered across Virginia. And then on Wavy News 10 at 6, how time has not healed the wounds here at Virginia Tech. People speak out about that. I'll have that story at 6. At Virginia Tech, Andy Fox, 10 on your side. And we have a special Virginia Tech Remembrance page on wavy.com. You'll find our coverage, a timeline of events from that day in 2007 until now, and photos from memorials. The man Chesapeake police say shot and killed his teenage brother faced a judge this morning on second-degree murder and gun charges. 20-year-old Jeremy Casper turned himself in on Friday for the death of his 16-year-old brother, Jordan. Detectives say the teen was shot in the head early Thursday morning at the Geneva Mobile Home Park in Deep Creek. Family members and neighbors told 10 on your side it was an accident. Police have not confirmed that. Jeremy Casper is due back in court on May 29th. Jury selection begins tomorrow in Norfolk for the Somali man U.S. authorities consider the highest ranking pirate ever captured. Mohammed Salih Shabin is charged with piracy for his role in the hijacking of an American yacht, The Quest, off the coast of Africa last year. All four passengers on board were shot and killed. Shabin's case is unique because he never set foot on The Quest. Prosecutors say he acted as a land-based hostage negotiator. Investigators say a fire that destroyed five homes in Chesapeake was an accident. They could not determine the cause, but say there will be no further investigation. Thursday, many of you watched live as Chopper 10 above this wind-fueled fire on Sweetleaf Place. You saw it spread to four other homes. No one was hurt. Deputies in Isle of Wight are trying to solve a destructive crime spree. Someone set two church vans on fire at Sandy Mount Baptist Church on Scott's Factory Road. Also, a vehicle crashed through a wall at Mill Swamp Baptist Church, drove across the gym floor, and then went out another wall on the same road. A vehicle crashed into a store and drove off. These pictures, by the way, come from Brandon Lowry, who sent them to report it at wavy.com. And no, we're not done yet. Someone set a stolen van on fire on Mill Swamp Road, and there was a hit and run involving a parked car on Halltown Road. Detectives say the same people tried to burn a car on Scott's Factory Road, left the scene of an accident on Rayner Road, and damaged several mailboxes near Comet Road. A Navy Admiral is expected to brief San Diego City Council tonight about plans to homeport 12 more ships there by 2017, including two more aircraft carriers. The Pentagon recently announced movement of U.S. military forces towards Asia and the Pacific Ocean. Tell your side's Jason Marks is working on this story right now. He'll have more on the potential impact to Hampton Roads coming up at 6. And another milestone for an aircraft carrier under construction. Structural production of the carrier Gerald Hall Ford is 75% complete. The ship is under construction at the Newport News Shipbuilding Division of Huntington Ingalls Industries. Now here's a picture from April 7th when the first piece of the aircraft carrier flight deck was erected. Huntington Ingalls says that Gerald R. Ford is on track for launch in 2013 and delivery to the Navy two years later. Many questions surround the death of a Norfolk infant tonight. New on Wavy News 10 at 530, we talked to neighbors about the family, why they're shocked over the allegation of murder. And salad is a healthier food option, but the lettuce at the center of a recall could make you sick. We're on your side with that consumer alert. And the DMV says warmer temps can lead to dangerous driving habits. Hear what the agency wants you to avoid wearing behind the wheel and why.
And a look at those warmer temperatures. Obviously, gorgeous, gorgeous weather. There are going to be some clouds approaching from the west, and we're going to see some changes, but it's about as warm as it's been so far this year, around 85 to 90 degrees. Once ahead for tomorrow and beyond, you'll find out with our forecast. Check your fridge for tonight's consumer alert. That is, if you use bags of salad made by Dole, they could be contaminated with salmonella. The bags of seven lettuces salads were sold in several states, including Virginia and North Carolina. The recalled salads have a use-by date of April 11, 2012. So if there is one in your fridge, throw it out. The most common symptoms of salmonella, diarrhea, abdominal cramps, and fever within 8 to 72 hours of eating the contaminated food. No flip-flops or sandals. That's a warning from the DMV as the weather gets warmer. One reason may seem obvious. Shoes with an open heel can slip and wedge under accelerator or brake pedals. High-heeled shoes can get caught or caught in floor mats. Driving in bare feet? Well, your foot can slip off the pedals. The DMV encourages you to wear sneakers and low-heel flat shoes when driving. Take a look at this. This was a mobile home park in Wichita, Kansas. Today, residents returned to assess the damage from the weekend tornado. Where was your house? It was over there, right behind this tree. And where is it now? It's right here, mixed in with somebody else's house. There's another house here. The residents received warning and moved to this shelter at the mobile home park to ride out the storm. New video from Oklahoma of two tornadoes. A meteorologist shot this video Saturday at the Twisters near Woodward. That's another one of the city's hardest hit by this weekend's severe weather. Six people died in the town from those tornadoes. And take a look at the power of one of the tornadoes in Oklahoma. A storm chaser captured this video of the swirling debris and a barn breaking to pieces. Look at that. Meteorologists say about 75 tornadoes touched down this weekend in Oklahoma, Kansas, Iowa, and Nebraska. One year ago today, a deadly tornado tore through the town of Colerain. Today, some of that destruction can still be seen. Tonight, residents reflect on that tragic day. They say pulled their community even closer together. And the way you board your plane could be changing how machines are doing the work of some airport security officers. Watching Wavy News 10 at 5 with Tom Shad, Nicole Libus, and Super Doppler 10 Chief Meteorologist Don Slater. One year ago today, two tornadoes ripped through Bertie County in North Carolina. The hardest hit area, Colerain, where 11 people died. Today, families are moving forward. The town, demolished by the EF3 tornado, quickly started rebuilding new homes and businesses. And turning your sides, Katie Collette just got back from coal rain. And Katie, you discovered the healing power of time. I sure did, Tom and Nicole. I was actually in Colerain last year shortly after that tornado hit, and the damage was unlike anything I had ever seen. I met families who lost everything, and today I revisited those families. They're smiling again, and they have a positive outlook on life, even those who lost loved ones in that deadly tornado. Coal rain today filled with new homes and happy people. It's hard to believe this is the place where one year ago nature unleashed a catastrophic tornado. From her new home, Annie Mitchell remembers when the tornado tore apart her old one. We were growing real hard as I walked into the kitchen. Not long after, her home collapsed around her. One year later, Annie has a beautiful view from her new front porch, a view marred by only one thing, remnants of her daughter's trailer still hang in the trees across the street. My daughter got killed anyway, in that debris. But this new home and her son's new home next door help Annie deal with the pain. This will make me feel good. We're back together. <laughs> We're all back together. Like Annie, coal rain is trying to move forward, but it can be tough. Every time you know, the weather forecast and strong winds, you know, it's, it's a reminder of April the 16th. Pastor Mary Drake will never forget the day the tornado hit, the day it took her brother-in-law's life and the lives of several church members. It was really a trying time for all of us, uh, knowing that families would never be the same. This is where Drake's brother-in-law, Robert Perry, took his last breath. Yet today, out of the destruction, a chance for Perry's family to begin again. A year later, you look back, 
and you see how God has blessed. Reminders of April 16, 2011 spring up on occasion in Colerain. Reminders of the tornado, reminders of its destruction, but also reminders that this small town is packed with resilient people, people stronger than any 150 mile per hour wind. We will survive. We'll survive us. And we didn't come this far for God to leave us now. We are survivors. And in many of the newly built homes in Colerain stands a new feature meant to protect residents should another storm come through. And you'll see that feature new at 6. Katie Collette, 10 on your side. A candlelight vigil is scheduled for 7 tonight at Colerain Elementary to honor the 11 lives lost in that tornado. A tornado also cut a path of destruction through Gloucester County one year ago. Two people died. Dozens of homes there were destroyed. The storm caused a lot of destruction at Page Middle School. A brand new school is set to open there in 2014. Don Slater's here now, and we're not talking about tornadoes today, really. Just another, actually, a preview of summer, it's we could very say. very warm out there. Yeah. yeah. Very, very warm. Mm -hmm. Warmest day we've seen so far. Uh, it was pushing 90 degrees. Did we break a record? No, we did not. Oh. So far. Uh, we still have yet to really make a final determination on that. Record is 91. Mm. Uh, we hit 89, 89. so far. Okay. I, I do want to tell you about uh, about a year ago today, and it was a Saturday, uh, and we knew it was going to be a bad day, but uh, the thing about, and here's why, I want to show you, uh, the thing from the, uh, from the uh, uh, storm Prediction Center out of Norman, Oklahoma. They're in charge of putting out all the watches, uh, severe thunderstorm tornado watches, and they predicted a very, very high uh, occurrence of uh, tornadoes and severe thunderstorms for our area for that particular date. That was April 16th. I dug this off the internet, uh, show it to you again. That's from the uh, Storm Prediction Center, and it was from last uh, a year ago today. So again, a very, very unusual situation. I'd not seen one for our area. Uh, really uh, ever. Uh, and of course, we see them out toward the Midwest, and we saw that over the weekend where they had all those reports of tornadoes there. Uh, again, but for uh, everything is calming down, uh, and all the spin that's created the th tornadoes into the Midwest has now moved on up into Canada. Even got snow this morning in the parts of Minnesota and Wisconsin and Michigan. For us, party's almost over. We saw the cloud cover off to the west by 9 o'clock this evening. We'll start to see a little of that 10 mile an hour winds out of the south, southwest, 10 to 15 as that uh, front draws a little closer uh, and tomorrow morning it skipped on over but I want to show you tomorrow morning here show you what's going on with that front that front should move on through around seven o'clock in the morning and we'll start to cool on down it's not going to be drastically colder but it is going to be in the 70s during the day for tomorrow uh, unlike today where we were pushing 90 degrees we'll see a breeze in the middle of the day 15 to 25 miles an hour and then that should drop on off by later on in the afternoon and again that cloud cover should start to recede a bit overnight, but then we'll start to see a chance of rain coming up on Wednesday. Just some scattered, very, very light rain. Last Thursday and Friday, a little on the cool side. 62, then 63, then 78 for Saturday. Yesterday, 86 degrees. We didn't think it'd get much warmer, but it did get warmer. 89 degrees uh, for today, and it's still very warm out there. 85, 88 degrees. Again, after that high today of 89, you can see again, mostly into the mid to upper 80s throughout the region right now. A little cooler into some areas near the water's edge. Now overnight we drop on down to about 64, 65 degrees. We'll actually start to warm up a little bit as that cool front moves on in and once that cool front moves on in it'll drop our temperatures really even into the afternoon uh, but not bad. 74 degrees for a high temperature. That's not bad at all. Here's where things are for Wednesday. Good chance of scattered light rain. It's not going to be a washout. A few light scattered showers. A few scattered showers continuing into Thursday morning and then a very good chance of rain for next Saturday night and Sunday. What's the most important thing to consider when buying a car? The experts at Kelly Blue Book say comfort is king. The company is out with the most comfortable cars and we'll show you which models made the list. Plus, cars are slowing down to see what's glittering and shining along High Street. Coming up, we'll take a closer look to show you what's so pretty and the ugly problem they're hoping to solve. Airport security officers replaced by machines? The Transportation Security Administration is testing boarding pass check-in units in Washington, D.C. and Houston. 
They recognize identification, including driver's licenses, tribal IDs, and passports. The TSA hopes the machines will do a more efficient job of weeding out fraudulent documents and getting passengers of their planes on time. A review is expected to last several months. The first 30 machines cost more than $3 million. Experts say most Americans look for comfort when buying a new car. Kelly Blue Book is out with a list of the 10 most comfortable cars. Number one, the Chrysler 300. The automaker says the underbody panels help the car's aerodynamics and make it a quiet ride. Number two, the Chevy Malibu. The Volkswagen Passat, Subaru Legacy, and Honda Odyssey make the top five. In the top ten, the Buick Regal, Toyota Camry, Buick Verano, Chevy Cruze, and Ford Taurus. All of the cars on the comfortable list are 2012 models with price tags starting at $30,000 or less. Oh, it's tough for parents to watch their babies getting vaccinated. What doctors at CHKD found you can do to ease their pain and make them more comfortable after they get those shots. And a day of remembrance, five years after the shooting spree at Virginia Tech. Ahead on Wavy News 10 at 530, how survivors of that campus shooting are challenging Congress to tighten gun control laws. Norfolk researchers say the way you comfort your baby after vaccinations can ease their pain and stop their tears. Researchers at Children's Hospital of the King's Daughters found that infants whose parents have used the 5S plan have had less crying time than babies who were offered other comfort methods like sugar water, pacifiers, or distraction. The 5S's, here they are, swaddling, side, stomach position, shushing, swinging, and sucking. Experts say that breastfeeding provides the best comfort during and after shots, but the five S's, that's a good alternative for non-nursing mothers. A Suffolk man is in jail, charged with the murder of an infant. Next on Wavy News 10 at 530.